Hi, um, I just wanted to talk about today. Um, I know my husband had already made a video about one of my customers that passed away that works at the train station here in Chicago and um, the CTA, how he passed away from a motorcycle accident. He's been my customer since last year and he's wonderful and he's so sweet and I haven't seen him in a long time, right? So I saw one of his co-worker who came back in who I, who I haven't seen for a while as well and um, I had said, I had asked the customer that came in and said, oh, so how so-and-so I haven't seen him in a long time. And the guy said, oh, I'm sorry, it's some unfortunate he passed away. And I thought it was a joke. I'm like, what? Are you serious? You're joking, right? He said, no, he passed away like in June or July of this year, 2012. And I was like, it's already August now. So I was like, are you serious? I was like in shock. He was such a great person. He was very sweet and kind. He's always like, oh, take your time in the orders. No rush. You know, he's like always the coolest. He's like, oh, such a, such a cool customer. I'm one of the coolest customers. And so it's just. I didn't feel like he was gone, you know, but, but he was really gone. And I was like, oh my gosh, it must have been a really bad accident for him to just like be gone in an instant, you know. And so it was really heartbreaking and it just made me think about how sad it is, you know, like how it makes you think about life, you know. It makes you feel about the family members that you have, like your siblings and, you know, your mom and dad, you know and the grandparents. I've never really known my grandparents really. They lived in like Australia and Vietnam and the ones in Vietnam already had passed many, many years ago. And then my dad's family side, um, his grandpa's gone, but the grandma is, is still alive. And um, I'm sorry, I don't even know much about my grandmother either. I mean, it's, they're so far away in Australia and we're in America. And so it's hard for me to stay in touch and we barely ever even see each other as, his family members, but anyways, it just makes, it's really sad, like, you have your siblings, okay, if you come from a big family, I come from a family of six children, I'm the youngest one, and my oldest sister is 12 years older than me, so she's in her mid-40s, and these people are supposed to be your family, right, your siblings, your mom and dad, and so on, or your relatives, and it's sad that it's hard to get along, or it's hard to be connected, it's hard to be close to certain people in your family member. And then your blood related family, like your immediate family. And so I'm not very close to all of my family members on my side. And even I'm not that close to my mom and dad because they're, they're like in Madison, Wisconsin, they're like about two and a half hours away. I know that's considered really close compared to some people who live in a complete different continent, you know, like different total completely far, far, far away. So I know two and a half hours is not far away. And um, not just visiting, but um, but having kids at this age, having this many kids, it's hard to commute. We'll have to rent a minivan. It's gonna cost about two to three hundred dollars just to rent for two, three days. And sorry, we don't have the finances to travel much to rent minivans and stuff for the whole family. And even if we had our own minivan, it would be too difficult because our kids are all under seven years old and there's four kids and I'm pregnant. I'm all about I'm about seven and a half months pregnant now. And so it's really hard to take little children under the age of ten when you still have to care for them and do you know, it's, it's kinda hard and they're in the car all day. They don't like long travels, you know, they kinda they get kinda antsy and it's just uncomfortable, especially in the summer when it's really hot, you know, but or in the winter when it's too cold and snowy and slippery and dangerous out there. So, traveling for us is pretty much not a wonderful thing. When we travel, we travel in terms of like our bikes, you know, we do a lot of like really athletic stuff. Um, we haven't been biking much this summer because it's been horribly humid and almost in the like over 100 heat index here in Chicago, Illinois. So it's been really, really hot and muggy. So when we commute, we commute by bikes. We bring our kids with us, we go biking, we put them in bike trailers and stuff. So if it's too far, we don't travel. If it's too inconvenient, we don't travel. If we could take the train or take the bus, then we'll do it for errands and stuff, but if it's too inconvenient for the kids, then we won't do it. Like, since our kids are getting bigger, we went to Chinatown yesterday, we took them on the Red Line train all the way down to Chinatown. It was about a 50 minute train ride. I mean, it's a long ride. I, hate, I get motion sickness easily and I hate it, but I did it because, you know, just spend time with the kids and have them enjoy, you know, a different environment. So we do stuff like that, but in stuff that involves taking the airplane, driving long distance, 
No, we don't do that. We just live a very simple life, very stationary. You know, we don't travel much far. We just kind of stay near to home and stuff. So, so visiting family far, um, from far away are just too complicated right now for us. And getting back to my point about family, um, I only get along with certain family members in my family, and and it's hard to get along with everyone because sometimes it always has something to do with money. Like I have some family members that only call me when they need money. Um, otherwise, you don't hear from them. Even if it's not money, I've done it many times before when I would call some of the family members to see how they're doing. I would call on their birthdays many years ago. I would call just to see how they're doing. You know, and it sounded like they didn't really appreciate the calls. They didn't feel like they wanted to talk to me. Um, when it comes to me, they don't really call me themselves. So after a while, I just got tired of it. I just feel like people just don't appreciate things, so I'm just going to leave them alone, or they just don't want to be bothered, you know? So I just got those signs from some of my family members. Um, and I just hate how for some of my family members, it's like to be friends with them, you have to give them money. And I'm just sick of that, you know? It's like if I don't give them money, they get upset at me and treat me like crap. You know, it's like you have to understand that I have children that I have to help take care of. I'm having financial problems myself too. It's like I have student loans. I have bills to pay the restaurant. I have lots of stuff. I have four kids as well, you know? Why the hell are you asking me for money? And if I don't give to you, you get pissed off. You know, it's like I hate it when people treat me like that because I can't give them money to let them borrow when they know they're never going to pay back anyways. Even if they pay, they ask you a week later, oh, can I borrow the money again? It's like, no, I don't like to do business with family members regardless business or not because it just always ends up in arguments and people need to take care of the financial problems and gambling problems or whatever debt they have because they're the one that have chosen that path in life about their money, how they use their money. You know what I mean? And to take it out on other people and treat them like crap because they say no, they don't want to give you money. So that's what is the toughest thing in family members but is when it comes to money. You know, I'm just so sick of being treated like I'm nothing because I can't provide the money for them to go on vacation or to go gamble or to um, go do whatever they want, you know? I really don't care what my family think because they don't help me. You know, they don't they don't help provide for me. They don't help babysit my kids, you know? They don't do nothing for me, my family. You know what I mean? So I don't owe them nothing and they owe me nothing. So. So when it comes to family, family really doesn't mean nothing to me. It really doesn't. I treat people based on an individual basis. Why should a family member be treated so high class, be treated so much better than some, some other stranger that has been good to me that I've met for the first time or repeatedly see them over and over over my lifetime that has become a good, genuine friend? You know, and I even like, when I want to be close to nieces and nephews, that's hard too because they live far away to be close to, and you lose connection with them. And so it's kind of like if you're not on good terms with your sibling, for example, you're not really going to be good terms with their children because their parents are always going to talk crap and say this and that, this and that. And I know their parents talk crap about me, you know? Say, Aunt oh, Jenny, this, Aunt oh, Jenny. Well, you know what? Screw you because, you know, I really don't care anymore because my whole life is just fed up with family members that don't appreciate what you do for them and they always complain. It's like, you know, it's like, you don't see me calling you every month for money. And when you come to me and I say no, it's like, why you have to be like that to me? It just makes me realize that in life, you can't be too attached. In life, you cannot hang out to people too much. And you end up only bringing pain, tears, and burden on your heart and your shoulder. And it brings a lot of sadness and depression, you know? And so I have to move on and focus on people that are good to me in my life, you know? My husband and I did not find good people in our lives until we're in our 30s. When we were in our 20s, all we dealt with was like bullcrap people, you know what I mean? We had friends that we thought were our friends, but all they were were just like backstabbers, gossiping, jealous, trying to break Freddie and I up talking about gossip and stuff. And and so Freddie was the one that I met that was been really good to me, and we connected really well. And so him and I decided to live a very private, very, very private life where we didn't have any friends really. We only did things together. We um, did not hang out with couples. We didn't hang out with friends, really. We never went to the bars and clubs with people at all anymore, really. Completely ended that activity type stuff in our life. We um, we just lived in each other's lives like a hermit crab. We lived 
lives very private. We rarely even saw family members much. We didn't hang out with them much. We didn't talk to anyone much. And so him and I became really close. And now we have our family of four kids plus a fifth one baby coming um, this coming October 2012. So now that Freddie has opened his business, and even before he even opened his business, he did have some martial arts and fitness clients that he's been working with for over a year that came with him along with his business when he finally opened. So so now I'm 34 now and Freddie's 30 and we're finally just like for some odd reason we're actually like meeting some really good genuine people that are truly good in the heart, you know. Even though we don't hang out with them every week or every day, we don't talk on the phone every day, we don't go shopping monthly together or do stuff together, go hang out or go movies together. Even though Freddie and I don't do that with his disciples or his clients, but so far his clients have been really good to us, you know. Freddie's parents uh, have been very supportive. They still work full-time jobs, only they come visit us. So the only family members that we actually see that are blood related is Freddie's mom and dad. And they've been really helpful, you know, and we don't bother them much for babysitting because we know they have a life, you know. We don't want to take advantage of that. So when we go somewhere, we either switch off with the kids or we bring the kids all with us when we go errands or do biking and stuff, you know. And um, and so those are the only two people in our lives right now that are very supportive in terms of blood-related family members are pretty much Freddie's mom and dad, and that's really amazingly supportive. So we truly appreciate that. I do not want to take advantage of them babysitting and doing so much for us. They've done so much for us already, and so we don't want to take more advantage by, oh, can you babysit? Here's our kids, you know, I'll drive you crazy, you know? So, so in terms of family, um, it makes you think that, you think things over, that you have other people that treat you better. And um, I've tried hard to be close to my niece and nephews, but most of them live very far away, and it's really hard to connect with them just over the phone because if you don't see each other or don't spend much time with each other, it's going to be really hard to connect. Even I have some here in town, it's hard to connect with them because they have their own lives. I respect that, their space. I've called them before. It's hard for them to respond back to me and communicate because they have their own lives and busy with their own things. I respect that, you know, they have their space. So eventually, there's not much connection with me and my nieces and nephews that are here in town. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's just life. You know, you can't push people to be close to you if they don't make the effort back, you know. Or if you try to connect with them and they're busy and they're not making time for you, then you have to respect that they have other priorities in life and that they have other people that they're closer to than me. And I have to respect that and that's fine. I just live my life closer to people who make an effort back. So for Freddie and I, being in our 30s, we finally actually found some really great genuine people and they just surprisingly just happened to be not our blood family members, but actually Freddie's disciples, his clients. And they have been very supportive. They've been wonderful. They've been the kindest people from the heart. And Freddie and I do see that. And we really thank them for being who they are and just loving our kids like they're their own. And just talking about it makes me tears up because um, you don't get much support from your own blood family, but you actually do get it from someone else that starts off with a stranger and they become more than just a stranger, they become acquaintance, and they become more than just acquaintance, they become closer as friends. Now they become part of your family and part of your heart. And that's wonderful to find because it's really hard to find real people out there. It's hard to find people who are generally kind, who do things from the heart. It's very hard to find people where you don't have to pay them money to be your friends. And it's very hard to find people that will love and care about you back without having to give them money to make them happy so they can destroy themselves with it, whatever they're going to do. You know, so, yes, in our 30s, we finally found some great, compassionate, great-hearted people. And we're very lucky, and we love them very much. They've been very good. And they love our kids like they are their own kids. So, just let you know. Family does not always mean anything. They don't always deserve priority. It's based on an individual basis, how they treat you, how you guys, how much, com how the, com how compatible you guys are, and if you guys get along or not. Sometimes we don't get along with people. It's best not to talk to them. It's best not to be too close. It's best not to um, be nosy with each other's business. So just focus and spend your time with people that you get along better with. So if you have brothers and sisters, whatever, if you don't get along with them, don't feel bad. Maybe it's best that you guys stay away from each other and just communicate um, very little until you guys can get along better and then actually see each other. 
Seeing each other it could lead to arguments, it could lead to physical fights, it could lead to extreme violence, it could be leading to someone's death or being put in jail. It's scary out there. So just be careful with yourself and don't put too much burden, burden on yourself, feeling bad, feeling pity, feeling sad for yourself because you don't get along with your family. Well, maybe you need to, it's time and then maybe it's destined for you to focus your time and energy on people that give you that will give you something back. Not in terms of like money and presents, not that. In terms of their heart and their time and consideration of you back. People who are being inconsiderate to you, thoughtless, why waste your time with them? They're not going to think of you anyways. They're not going to help you in a way or improve you or bring any positive stuff in your life. But rather you should focus your time and energy on people even though they are not your blood related family members but focus on who's there for you who's helpful who's good to you and don't forget you have to be good to other people too you have to be considerate and be thoughtful back you cannot just keep taking in your life you have to remember to give back in some way um, from the heart you know and um, it's up to you sometimes people so. coming